Welcome back to A Time for Change presented by City. We're back with Brandon Buchanan, co-founder at Metaverse Capital, an investment firm employing a thesis-driven approach around the metaverse internet. We just spoke with Brandon about what Metaverse does, and now in the spirit of Christmas and the holidays, he's going to give us some tips about how to actually buy NFTs. So Brandon, we just closed out the last segment talking about the $3 million you spent on a rare NFT. So I'm not sure how many viewers can spend that much money, but I'm curious if you had to suggest how to get into NFTs, where to purchase them and where to start, what would you su suggest to our viewers on how to start in the spirit of the, uh, Christmas? Uh, well, listen, uh, this is this is uh, certainly a Christmas gift for everybody. I think this is a blessing for everyone. We we Everyone should stop what they're doing right now and create a MetaMask wallet or some sort of cryptocurrency wallet. The best way to learn to do this is to roll up your sleeves and get started. I promise it's not as difficult as it seems. So everyone will set up a wallet. They'll set up a MetaMask wallet um, again or another comparable wallet. I don't want to you know, act like I'm uh, you know, giving preferential treatment or bias treatment of MetaMask, but it is a simple one. Uh, MetaMask wallet, uh, you will transfer cryptocurrency to that wallet from whatever exchange you have, Coinbase, Gemini, or what have you. Um, typically, Ethereum is the, the currency that most folks use. And then you'll connect your MetaMask wallet to OpenSea or some other marketplace. And then from there, you know, you'll be able to peruse all the art, all the photographs, all the collectibles, um, and you'll be able to buy something that's within your range. And from there, uh, and why I say it's important that you need to set up your own wallet is because the, the recipient that you're going to be sending the NFT to is going to need a wallet address themselves. So you will need to be able to guide them through that process so that you can actually send it to them. Um, and then at that point, once you have the recipient address, you can transfer and send whatever NFT that you bought for them. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people oftentimes you can think back to a gift maybe in the past that you've received and maybe you didn't like. Would it be possible to exchange or return an NFT if you got something you didn't want? Uh, you, I mean, you, you could certainly send it back to the sender if you didn't send her if you didn't want it, or you could just hide it uh, in your, um, you know, you could just hide it in your 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 wallet on OpenSea. Um, but I think it's interesting. Like these these NFTs are going to be sort of like your new social profile, right? And I think Gary Vee has mentioned this a few times. Um, I think it's like to show your creativity, to show what artists that you're into. Um, there's something very dynamic about that that you're actually you know purchasing or being sent a different piece of work. And people do gift uh, artwork. It happens through airdrops and other things. But um, you know, yeah. I mean, I guess there's a way to kind of send it back. But it's the same way that um, I guess you would take something back to the to the store. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you would do it. You would kind of just discard it or put it away, you know? Yeah. And so I know a lot, the NFT is all about rarity. And I think that's where the money comes from. So I'm curious, are there any particular artists that you're liking in the NFT space? And how does it go from obtaining an NFT to actually profiting off of it? Yeah, I mean, there's so many artists that I like. Um, it's hard to really single them out. Um, Ixchels is, is, you know, one of my favorites. I mean, she is just a phenomenal generative artist. Um, similarly, Dimitri Cherniak, they all come from this sort of like art blocks uh, community. And, you know, their works have, have skyrocketed, right? I mean, I think several months back, you could have you know, bought a piece for you know a few thousand bucks, um, and now I think you know the floor for a Dimitri Cherniak piece is probably thirty each. So you're talking one hundred twenty thousand. Um, but X Copy uh, recently did uh, a drop in connection with Async Art. And if you were part of the whitelist there, you could have bought it for a quarter of an ETH, which is about a thousand bucks. You know, love Matt Ken, Kevin Abash, I mentioned earlier, he's sort of the OG crypto uh, guy here. He has sort of like the first piece of NFT art. Um, and then there are others. There's uh, Rick McGinnadal, there's Sear Light. I mean, uh, once you start going down the rabbit hole, it's just like, you know, traditional art, right? Like you love Damien Hirst, you love, uh, you know, you love uh, Cause or Jeff Koons or Nina Abney Chanel. I mean, there's just so many people. Uh, out there doing fantastic work. Um, and it's just really cool to see it in a, in a sort of a digital uh, way. Um, but yeah, that's, <laughs> I, and I would, by the way, I would recommend those um, to anyone and, and folks who are just starting a portfolio. You know, I would recommend kind of mirroring uh, what we're doing uh, at Metaphor, looking for these kind of older, uh, early vintage pieces of NFTs. You can go buy a moon cap, which originated in, in 2017 for 0.4 ETH. Um, you know, you can buy uh, <laughs> rare Pepe's it sounds, for, it sounds, pretty cheap as well. Absolutely. I appreciate all of that. It sounds like there's so many different options. So, Brandon, thank you so much 
Brendan Buchanan, thank you, co-founder, uh, founder and managing partner of Metaphor Capital. Thank you for all of that insight. Um, one thing I took away from what you just said, start a wallet, just get your hands dirty. So look up Marquise Francis. I might be making my NFT soon. Um, but there's a lot of great ideas for Christmas coming up.